I was in such pain, I never thought I'd walk again, dude. That's how bad my joints and body were at the time that these beings came back and returned. And I was ready to give up, like on life, on everything. So Stephen, my understanding is that you had an NDE when you were four years old, but you didn't actually remember it until later on in life. So I would love for you to paint a very clear picture of your NDE and how you came to the realization that you even had one to begin with. Sure, yeah. Well, I was four years old. I was driving a big wheel and was completely run over by a car. Um, I went down the driveway. My brother was across the street and he was calling me to come over. Let's go to the mall. And I was super excited. So I didn't even think. Just went down between two parked cars uh, in the oncoming traffic. And I was hit. Unfortunately, the woman who hit me also was drinking. So she didn't know she hit a child. So she continued going and people stopped there probably about like 30 feet later um, at the stop sign. So my big wheel is what saved me. Um, what I remember is a blur as I go down the driveway. And the next thing I know is I'm looking at myself and I'm seeing my eyes roll in the back of my head. And then the screen just fades and then it opens again. And I'm sitting with someone who I think is someone. And I'm leaning to my side. I'm leaning on them. I got my head down. And the first thing I do is, you know, recognize that I'm leaning on someone. I open my eyes as my head is, is kind of tilted down and I catch the, the glimpse of long hair. And it was like silvery white, kind of luminescent almost. Um, and it's almost touching the ground. So that's kind of unusual. And then I notice like the bottom of a robe. I can't see any feet with it. So my first thought is, who is this? What happened? And I turn to ask what I still think is a person, what happened? And I turn, and it's this being that has only a robe and light for a body. Um, so it's a, a hooded figure with just light where their face should be. You didn't see a person in there. It literally was just light wearing clothes, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. When I, I turned to look and I asked what happened and for a minute I'm looking at the face and there's no face. There's only light inside this this hooded robe and the being says, Stephen, you had an accident. Put your head down. Everything's going to be all right. And so I just kind of put my head down and I'm still staring at this face as I'm getting pulled in to the face. And I can feel myself kind of getting stretched out if I could explain it, but I'm going forward into this light. And then I see a scene start to emerge it has meadows, flowers, colors that I've never seen still today. And, and they were so vibrant and crisp. And I was aware that the flowers and the colors were their own beings and that there was some sort of harmony happening here, but that they were their own, they had their own free will, if you could say it that way, but that they were their own beings. And it was just meadow upon meadow upon meadow. And I see a walk and I kind of look in the distance to the end of this walk and I see figures and it looks like they're playing and I, I kind of focus in and it's strange because they're far away, but they're close to me. And, and I, you know, there's a lot of things that you really can't explain with some of these experiences. And I'll tell you about that in a, in a bit when I tell you the, the things that happened later. Mm -hmm. But I see these figures and I realize one is an old man and one is a child, a little girl, and they're playing. And when the child laughs during this, this play, this laughter, it just goes through the air, through the energy. Um, and it's its own, uh, as again, its own being. So it floats through the air, touches me in the center of my heart, and I instantly realize everything is one. That, that everything came from this place, and everything will recircuit back through it when it returns. And that it was pure love, that hate, pain, suffering couldn't exist there. And it wasn't that it didn't, it was that it couldn't form function. 
it, it couldn't vibrate high enough to match. And I just instantly got all that information uh, to unpack later, apparently. So it was just like a knowing that you had in that instant, like a, a yeah, download. Yeah, it was like an instantaneous knowing that that was my home, that everything came from it, everything's going to go back to it, and I wanted to stay. I can imagine. And I've heard someone else describe the colors that they've never seen before um, as being that the light was coming from the flowers, the light was coming from the grass, like they had their own light source. It wasn't like light was shining on them. They were lit up. Was it something similar to that? Yeah, that's a, a good way to describe it. But yeah, they, they were their own beings. That's the only way I could, could describe it. But yeah, the vibrancy, how mm -hmm. real it was, was a hundred times what we experience here. It was like that later in my life, I understood that was reality and that I was here playing a character. Um, but yeah, the vibrancy and the unique state of its own being um, to the colors, just the flowers. I mean, everything was sacred and you understood it, you know, how sacred that recognizing each individual small being was and how important they were. Wow. So I'm, I'm hit with this love and I'm like, man, I want to go there. I want to stay there. And they said, it's not your time. And it was like somebody just moved the scene to the side. And I'm standing in this, this space. And it looks like night sky, but without stars. Not quite black, but like a night sky without stars. And I start to see lines going up and down, back and forth. And it begins to look like what we would say a blueprint would look like of like a building or something. That bluish kind of with lines on it and they explain this is the quantum field that people build their reality in relationship with this field using their thoughts and their emotions um, that we have a thought it goes to our heart it goes to the field and it circuits back through us and this gives us our interpretation of material reality um, emotional and spiritual realities and I notice in the distance in, in the field, there's like this, the small key card. I could, I, if I could explain it correctly, looks like a credit card, but it's missing a corner. And the being says, this is your divine blueprint. This is for redemption. This is where you should identify yourself, um, with what you should identify yourself with. And I'm trying to paraphrase a little bit because I was four. And a lot of this came back later. So I don't want people to think like, okay, four years old, I walked out of there with all this stuff because it took a while for the memories to come back. Um, but this is your divine blueprint. And what people need to do is believe they are this image of creator they were made in rather than giving their identities to the world and to false realities. Um, so in other words, I need to unsubscribe to any identities given to me by the world and mm. subscribe only to the thought that I am the image of creator. And they explained to me by showing me that this would recircuit my system. This would correct all that wiring of trauma, uh, survival, things like that, um, by circuiting with this one singular thought alone, um, not having a hundred labels and identities out there. So that kind of passed. Um, and then the next thing I see is this kind of like wagon wheel. It's almost like a medicine wheel. And I'm looking at it almost like I'm looking kind of down on it, uh, like you're in a skybox or something at a game. And there's this energy down in the center. The very center has this condensed uh, bluish, whitish energy. And they explain this is how you come in to the reality as pure love. And then you spend your energy to have the experiences. So they're showing me the field again, like they talked about in the beginning. And they show a cord going out from my heart. You know, as they tell me I'm this energy, it's coming out of my heart center and it's going to the field. And now I'm noticing there's like deposits. There's like little TV screens. It's making a deposit of, they explained to me, this is where you store your experiences. Um, in the field or records, if you will. Um, 
So this cord went out to these memories and they came back through me. And then he explained to me that you can have your life review while you're alive. This is called ascension. This is mm. evolution of humanity. Um, and they mentioned some things like that, references uh, to the Christ. They're kind of showing me these multiple realities, these multiple dimensions, and they're explaining to me to call all of your energy back into the moment of now uh, when you're ready. Um, to return all of the energy to the present moment, to take authority over all these timelines that I would create. Um, so that that spending currency, my energy, um, is my currency to experience reality. If I overspend into debt, I'm going to experience a very linear and flat reality. If I'm aware of how I'm spending and cultivating and saving and investing in energies, then I'm going to have a much richer, wider experience. So that kind of fades. The next thing I see is this triangle kind of coming at me and it's kind of lit up. And I notice there's three dots, one on each tip. And they explain to me, this is father, God, heavenly father. This is divine mother, mother, God, make them one and they'll have a son. And then they explained to me that this was also a singularity that I had a sun within my center that I would activate and grow, that I had a quantum generator that was capable of generating quantum energy for embodiment, a frequency oscillator and a kind of like a Tesla coil that's an oscillator. Depending on whatever I fed my system, I would create this character. Um, so I started to get the notion that I was in a quantum experience, that I was downloaded into this experience and that I was this one energy that I had went to visit. Um, so that was slowly g getting the feeling of that. Let me see if I understand that correctly. Um, the, the triangle, the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so father, God, mother, God. So divine feminine, divine masculine, correct? Heaven, and earth, <clears throat> thought and breath. Okay. Heaven, earth, thought, and breath. And then what's the third point? Conscious mind and subconscious mind. When these come together, that's when you're going to start to create the alchemy. That's when you're going to start to get the singularity. Um, and if you look at the, the fundamental quantum physics behind it, you can see the formula for using my higher self, lower self, my positive and negative. Now, what they were explaining to me was leaving the matrix by wiring myself into a direct current as opposed to the alternating current that we inhabit throughout our lives where we're pushed and pulled by circumstances through our emotions and our embodiments. They were kind of giving me the formula then. Um, naturally, as I'm coming out of that, you know, I'm, I'm not re remembering all of it. I knew something happened. But I couldn't pull it up and I couldn't remember what. And it was around puberty, 12. That's when the memories started coming. I tried to like talk to somebody, hey, this happened when, and I realized that wasn't a good thing um, because it just made me, I mean, even now today, people think I'm crazy. Never mind back then, you know. So the right people find you and resonate with you. What happened at 12 that you started remembering these memories? Like, just, when, how did they come to you? Um, it was just bits and pieces. It was like, holy cow. I'm, I'm, I'm having the memory just come that I'm sitting with this being or speaking. And I'm like, holy cow, that was real. That something really did happen. So I'm getting a self sense of like vindication and small pieces. Um, tried to talk about it. I realized it wasn't a good thing. And then I just kept it to myself, but the memories grew. And I started to learn more and more about what we talked about. At first, it was remembering we sat and talked. And then it was remembering what we talked about. And then it was finally, okay, what did this mean? What was that? But I never really had the the uh, the physical, you know, bringing it out into the physical. So I never felt comfortable talking about it. So I kept a lot of it to myself. I figured, honestly, it was a past memory. It was something that just happened to me. It was over and done with. Um, but little did I know, you know, quite a few car accidents later, uh, playing sports, um, on pain medication for many years, just to be able to go to work and function. I was, 
I was in such pain. I never thought I'd walk again, dude. That's how bad my joints and body were at the time that these beings came back and returned. And I was ready to give up like on life, on everything. And I'm having surgery on my elbow. How many years after your NDE? This was 25, 30 years later. Um, this was when I was about, I think I was, I was around 37 around there, maybe 35 ish. A lot of life has happened since. Oh yeah. I was miserable, but the, when they came back, I had so much pain, dude, it was hard to function. It's hard to go to work. It was hard to get up. It was, it was heavy in other words. So I figured if there was a God, he didn't like me because I had experienced, had this experience and then there's all this darkness and pain. So I'm like, okay, you know, it was just a past memory. It's over and done with. And then I'm sitting there having surgery and I'm feeling very anxious. I hadn't had medication yet. So there's nothing that I could say, Hey, this was the medication. Um, I'm getting ready to get up and leave. And I'm literally in the, just covered with panic. All of a sudden I go to get up and leave and this energy starts at my feet. And it was, you could feel it almost like you could feel someone putting their hand on you. It started at my feet, went all the way around me, and I felt the warmest, most beautiful love ever. And then it was, Stephen, put your head down. Everything's going to be all right. And then I went, oh, my God, that was it. I lost, all my reality broke right there in that moment when I realized this one voice that I, I met it for, this being, this voice is the same voice I'm hearing now. They came wow. together and it was like a flood of visions started, a flood of emotions. Um, I cried and then I woke up and started to be able to sense energies around me. I went to the doctor and I asked him what he did to me. I was, I was twisted after that. For, like good twisted or bad twisted? I wasn't sure what was real and what wasn't anymore. That was the honest to God truth. I went to the doctors and I started yelling at them and I'm oh, surprised wow. they didn't. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't throw me out of there at the time. So tell uh, me like, what were you experiencing ago. in your body when you came back from your, from, from that surgery? Like what was happening specifically that made you go off on the doctor? It was like feeling your feelings times a million, but then realizing there's other stuff going through me that I don't have control over. I was realizing that everything was passing through me. It wasn't really happening to me, but it was hard for me to get that equation. Um, that I, all of a sudden I'm picking up these energies. And I'm like, I know there's something right there. I know there's something right there. Eventually this started with spirits speaking to me, um, seeing energies and silhouettes moving around me, some smoky, some dark, some light. And then at first I thought I was being haunted and it took me a little a little bit to realize um, as I'm speaking to these energies that they're saying a lot of the same things I used to say to my younger self. A lot of things about not being good enough. You'll never be anything in your life. That's That was the turning point when I realized this is being transmitted through me. These are distortions. This is not happening to me. It was I was seeing something on a quantum level and that I needed to tune my thoughts and my emotions and that I would tune out these, these waveforms, these frequencies. Mm -hmm. So slowly, slowly by slowly, I'm, I'm in it thinking I'm crazy. Then I'm getting the answers. Um, so during this time where I, I'm starting to see and sense things, I'm at work, um, I'm working at a, as a retail store manager at a video game store. I'm just trying to function, right? Trying to go to work, normal person. I'm starting to laugh out loud. I'm starting to cry all of a sudden. I'm starting to hear people's thoughts and feel their emotions. And I would play games at first where I would ask them if they wanted something and I would see if I could hear it. And it, and it was matching up about 95% of the time. Whoa. Um, so I was like, something's going on with energy here. Eventually it got so intrusive. Um, one day I'm at work and my assistant manager is like, dude, you're bright red. And I didn't have anything wrong with me. I wasn't sick or anything, but I was just experiencing this shift, this state of vibration that was just changing me. And it got so intrusive that I had to leave that job, start service job. But before I left that job, um, before I left that job, 
I, that was the time that I started to go to all these different churches that I could find because I was just looking for somebody to talk to. Sure. And I knew it was coming from God. I just didn't know why. I didn't know what. Didn't know what was happening. Stephen, were you guys religious at all when you were growing up? Did you have a religion? No, no religion. No religion. Never went to church. Never um, heard some of the phrases that I'm going to say to you in a minute. And, re- you know, which I guess kind of lends some credibility to the story. But I will say, I think now, many years later, my clients and the results are enough that spirit's working through me to work through them. It was like, we're all one and it's making us one. And that's where their healing is. It's in their identity. But no, I was never religious. Wow. Never. Yeah. No. So you're like, I'm going to figure this out. I knew it was coming from within me and that creator, God, whatever that was, was a feeling. It was a frequency. It was an energy. And if I did, I was starting to learn if I did certain things, I would move away from that energy. If I did these things, I would get closer to it. And I started to realize the different foods that I was feeding my spirit in terms of energies. So before I left, the store i was going to churches and and man i was crying at some and some of them you know they gave you comfort but they didn't really have answers so i was like some of them the doors were locked that really hurt me it Mm. it hurt my heart but i understand why but at the time i was just you know i needed to talk to somebody so i go back to work you know these are months and months of this stuff happening um i go to lunch break one day go to go in the gas station and this kid's standing in line with his father in front of me they're getting ready to pay and he asks his father can i get this uh peanut butter cup and i'll never forget this and he goes yeah he goes over he holds it shows him and he's only got one and he goes back into line and i'm like okay and then he goes can i get this peanut butter cup goes over gets it shows his dad one goes i'm like he only had one both times and it happened the same exact way and i was like that was trippy you know and i'm a skeptic dude and i was like okay there was something weird about that i literally walked out the door got in my car started my car and the the radio was already on so they're talking to a woman that that won a radio contest and they're talking to her about the answer and they're laughing then all of a sudden like somebody hit a switch the phone is ringing on the radio and they're asking the woman the question, but I had just heard the answer. And that, that was the day when I was like, do I have to put myself in the hospital? Something's wrong here. Later that night, ball of light in my room. And I woke up and I'm like, am I awake? And I w- went through the motions. Am I awake? Am I sleeping? Is there a lamp there? What's happening? So that visited a few times. Um, a few weeks after that, I had a woman fall down outside the store this was before i left and she was in pain she was an elderly woman she hit the cement i was the first one there Uh, i told the person next door go call somebody and as she's in pain i put my hand on her back for some reason i was not that kind of person at the time uh i was very very keep to yourself i'll keep to myself person at the time so i put my hand on her back and she looks at me and she says i'm all warm and I have no pain. And that really tripped me out. I went back and I thought about that for days and days and days because I felt the warmth go up my arm. Um, so that was kind of the first hint that I had some other healing gift happening. So let me slow down a little bit. Do you want to ask anything? Yeah, that's everything you said is amazing. Okay, so going back to the kid in the candy store and then hearing the radio. So it was like you were having deja vu. Yeah, and then but it was, I was and, in it and I was walking it and I couldn't separate reality from whatever was happening. So that was my concern. I'm like, is this what is going on? You know, kind of like little like a glitch in the matrix, like you were experiencing it and then experiencing it immediately after you had just yeah, experienced it. Was like my it. vibration was so high. It was like I was getting the information before it actually happened or something. Wow, that is trippy. Okay, now the balls of light in your room at night, what did they look like? Were they, what color were they? Were they big? Were they small? 
Were you awake when you saw like them? It was like almost white with like a bluish tint. And I would say it was like the size of a softball. And yeah, I was definitely awake because I put myself through those emotions to make sure, those motions to make sure that I was awake. Because like, again, I was questioning whether I was sane or not. Being a skeptic, you know, you're like, am I crazy? Because you don't want to, you don't believe this stuff is real. Because I didn't. Um, even after my experience, I'm like, oh, it happened because I almost died and it was a past memory. That's done. But little did I know, time was not what I thought it was. And that there was a, a quantum leap happening. That I was soon going to be my future self, guiding my past self in the present moment through this singularity that I was, uh, that was being created. You know, That's so that wild. the ball after the balls of light, um, these beings showed up. Um, I couldn't see them at first, but they started speaking to me. And this was around the same time where I was having those silhouettes around and I was, I was hearing things like I was telling you, like I was, I could hear them speaking to me and I recognized it was a lot of the trauma that I experienced as a child. Um, so I thought it was just that at first. I'm like just picking up some interference um, through my receiver, but it wasn't. They were much more clear, much more distinct. They said they were from the Galactic Federation, that they were Arcturians, and that I was part of some divine council of nine, and that they were here to help me with my service to humanity to help them evolve. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. See you later. And literally they left and I went and looked up this information that I had never heard about and finding stuff about it. Um, and they talked the next time they returned, um, I, I listened more and they were talking about ascension and about how humanity is going to rewire themselves from survival to thriving, um, and out of the matrix, if you will, and out of the linear system, uh, alternating current. Good times, bad times, good times, bad times into a grounded system, a direct current. Uh, so they were talking a lot about how we process and store data for embodiment, processing it through the heart first, recircuiting it through the heart before it goes through our body, because that's where the pain and disharmony is coming from. So there was a lot of in biological machinery, quantum, uh, quantum energy as well as the programs that are out there that are harvesting our quantum energy that are keep, keeping us separated from our identity. Um, okay, let so. me stop you there because you're saying, a, you're giving me so much information right now and it's all so good. Um, so these beings that came in to you after you saw the balls of light, they said that they were Arturians, right? And you had never heard that term before. No, oh, no, I didn't believe in aliens, didn't it, you know? Never heard of Arcturians. And were you awake when this was happening? Yeah. Yeah, I was awake. They were in the corner of my room, and I could feel them, hear them. And I'm, when I mean feel them, I mean my whole vibration changed, like my whole state of being. So I knew, you know, okay, whatever's speaking to me is different. Were they, did you feel like a euphoric feeling? What were you feeling in your body yeah, when you, you saw them? Yeah, you could say euphoric. You could say almost like, atmospheric pressure change um so Interesting. then started with the dreams of being on the ships waking up covered in sweat like weeks apart i would dream being on the same ship but i'd be in different areas i'd be in a medical area i'd be in another bay that was birthing children and i as i walked by these children i could feel how highly intelligent they were like it was just all over me i could feel their intel intelligence at such a young age do you and think then just th different areas of the ship i had no hair i had a white suit wow do you think these beings were the ones that were with you when you had your near-death experience and then your surgery i believe they're all working for the same common cause to kind of get us back to our identity kind of rewire us out of the uh, illusions and the darkness that we've created. Um, the being I met, I would refer to as an Elohim, as an angel, um, wow. basically, an, an, an angelic waveform, um, a, a waveform of celestial intent, put it that way, but something that exists within us all. It's flowing through every one of us. 
but it's a matter of moving our distortions out of the way and connecting with our heart. And it's like, everything is there. Apparently there's a shift happening right now on the planet. And there's a lot of talks about, you know, 2027 being the year that, or 2026, that things are going to change drastically. Have they said anything about that to you? Yeah, there was this knowing um, when they returned in like 2016 where I got, I got dry food, I got water, I got a little bug out kit, just in case there's a prolonged period of time where we're without power or communications. Um, they did speak a lot about the sun, the sun awakening with us and changes are going to happen with the sun that are going to affect us and that eventually our beings, many of us, will evolve into a being that absorbs and, and you could say eats more light than dense material, um, eventually out of necessity. Um, and you see kind of it happening now with the change to artificial foods and, you know, we're, we're being more aware of it now, but yeah, there's a being that's, that's coming through this evolution. That's going to be more sustained by light, but it's a matter of a matter or not of whether we can recircuit everything through our heart and allow ourselves to evolve. Do they give you a timeline of when this evolution is going to happen? Like, is it going to happen over two years, 10 years, a hundred years? No real timeline, just the sense that I needed, needed to go do things. I needed to become accountable to love. I needed to get my, my stuff together and, and start becoming actionable in the knowledge that I knew, uh, first on myself and then others, but that I had to prepare, you know, um, and I don't want to say prepare like, yeah, everybody's going to get wiped out. But I do believe, and as we're seeing now, energies are rising in people due to the rising polarity. Things are being revealed that people are hiding in themselves. And they're hijacking their neural activity. It's called neural hijacking. That's a neuroscience term for when we have so much negatively charged energy that it overrides a rational thought and there's a lot of planetary conditions and other things as we know recently that affect people uh the geomagnetics of it and it's gonna you know i see like the bible or mother against mother and, or mother against son and all that stuff because of what's inside people so when i see the news and i see so and so just went crazy and did this and did that and you can't fathom how it happens they're, they're hijacked. It's already what's inside them. That's why the harvesting, the quantum energy is so important. These lower programs that are trying to bind our identities. They're trying to capture our image when our image is on. It's not, you can't capture it here. We're bigger than this place. So it's a matter of correcting the thought pattern. So what, what are these? Okay. These lower programs, because you started talking about this earlier and I interrupted you. Um, that there was some say, something something interfering yeah. with with us. Yeah, there's a lot of darkness that works through people that they're not even aware where they implement things that want to make you feel guilty for let's say what kind of car you drive, your medical choice, who you vote for, dark program. You don't get a say in me. I'm a free I have a free will. You don't get to make me feel guilty. You don't get to make me feel bad. Um, because I see that a mile away. So it could be that. It could be something that's telling you you're not good enough until you get this. You're not pretty enough. You're not accepted. When all of us are flawed and all of us are imperfect for a reason. So we could share that uniqueness with each other. So there's a lot of programs to capture that need for approval when you're seeking that need for approval, validation, um, giving your identity, in other words, to the world. That's going to trap you in a box. So how does one reclaim their sovereignty? How does one become aware of that programming that's happening? Because for a lot of people, they're not aware that this is happening and they're identifying with their circumstances, what's whatever's happening right in front of them. Yeah, the biggest thing everybody can do is start with a consistent practice of programming your parameters. Because if I'm inputting my parameters about what I am, now I have parameters to see what's going on outside of me for what tries to tell me what I am. And I'm also stopping myself from the needing to seek validation where it's already been given. Cause that's where my wires are going to get mixed up. Um, so when I wake up in the morning, 
Um, and, and this is how I see it. I see it as plugging in my device because I'm always absorbing and processing data, always. And I don't get too personally attached to sadness, fear, worry, stress, anxiety. I'm aware I'm the one feeling them, but I'm not the feelings themselves. They're passing through my system. So what I do in the morning, I plug myself in. I ask spirit to come down from above, connect to my heart, and expand around me. So I kind of see it as like grabbing an extension cord. So a consistent practice, engaging with creator, giving thankfulness and gratitude, and then speaking to any lower energy that's in our body. Fear, worry, stress, anxiety. That's a big thing that people are missing. So it's breath, meditate, uh, meditation, but a lot of people are missing that thought and exercising their authority or their will um, to claim, I'm already sovereign. I'm already whole because the truth is you were already loved before you came here. It's just a matter of remembering that and allowing things to recircuit and reconnect. Um, and then that giving that away to the world, you know, to these feelings that want to pull me into shame, guilt, or regret of the past, fear, worry, or stress of the future, because that's flattening my signal. I want all of my energy in the moment of now. So waking up with a consistent practice of giving thanks, gratitude, and then speaking to the body that I already am whole. I already am love. I already am validated. And working with that sensation of knowing. What I tell my clients is you can achieve a lot through knowing. So I'll ask you, do you know how to tie your shoes? I assume you do. <laughs> yeah. I assume you know how to walk a dog. And I assume you know how to make a bowl of cereal. So if the audience just thinks about these things and feels that feeling of knowing, of course I know it. All you need to do is replicate that. Replicate that knowing when it's concerning your identity being sovereign and feed that into your system. So... Did they explain to you why we forget? Why do we come into this life, forget to only only to remember and to have to like do the these protocols every morning? What's the point? I would say the point is because creator wanted to have a self-reflection and an experience of eternal growth through humanity. And I think we see that with things in the Bible where creator's still learning and says, Hey, I'm not gonna flood the world again. All right. Because I believe Creator is evolving with us and through us. Um, and the need for forgetfulness would be for that contrast forming period for growth. Um, because without contrast or darkness, we have no refinement. There's nothing to learn with. There's no alchemy. There's no us. We float away into a million molecules. Yeah. So, um, during this time that I'm, I'm going through that, uh, transformational challenging my sanity period. Um, I'm driving home from work and I'm just beating up, beating myself up uh, about all the shortcomings and uh, not being good enough, not being strong enough, whatever it may be. I was going hard that day. And this voice in my car as I'm driving comes in. And this was kind of during a time of the Arcturians coming in, um, these other other voices that I was kind of trying to filter out, to be honest with you. Um, cause I didn't want to hear him. I didn't want to go to bed at night and not be able to shut my brain off and have spasms on the side of my head and not be able to go to sleep for weeks. So I, it was really challenging. Um, I mean, literal physical, my muscles were spasming along the side of my head as this Whoa. communication would begin. Yeah. So that was when I was, you know, getting to the period where this is transmitting through me. It's not happening to me. I need to figure this out by tuning myself and realizing I was a divine instrument. Okay. So none of this was taught to me, you know, literally regular guy until these <laughs> beings came back. So I'm, I'm driving, beating myself up. This voice comes into my right, starts telling me how beautiful I am, how much people love me and these good things that I've done for people and how loved I am. And, and all of a sudden I'm getting filled up and I'm like, this is different. Who are you? And the voice says, I am. And I'm like, again, never religious. I'm like, my response is I am who? And it was clear, clear as day. Um, probably the clearest communication I've ever had. Um, voice says, I am again. And I say, I am who? 
you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm like thinking I'm being toyed with. And on the third one, I am. It was like every single emotion I had ever felt in my life, combined with every memory I ever had, came through me separately, but at the same time. And that was it. I lost, I, like a reflex, I just started bawling and bawling, and I pulled the car over, and I cried for a good five, ten minutes, just wow. in like wowed by what the heck was that what a gift and it was like later that i under that i learned that okay this was creator was i am with the burning bush and and this and all these other things so i call it my burning glove compartment moment because like that's where the voice was over by the glove compartment but <laughs> yeah so that was a big one that really altered my perception of reality and got me into the position of understanding and that I was a player in this, this game, if you will, that I logged in to play this character, but I wasn't Steve. Um, I was the energy playing Steve. That's so cool. No, it's so beautiful. Um, so profound. And did that shift something in you after that moment? Is that when you kind of shifted? Yeah, for sure. That's when I started to really get interested in healing. During that time, I started to study Reiki. I became a, a Reiki master, and I was doing that for a while. And then it kind of graduated into, you know, them, these beings teaching me more about apparently what I already knew, um, but reconnecting these these energies in me um, to kind of pass on this, this knowledge that we've forgotten. Um, so I started to get into Reiki became a Reiki master, started taking people and then slowly graduated into zero point and into understanding what that singularity was doing, that it was grounding ourselves into a maximum ground state so that we could leave this place where we created all the illusion and distortions and the bondage, if you will. Did they talk about reincarnation? Well, I can tell you what I know about reincarnation. I can tell you when I thought it was during my crazy period many years ago, when I thought I was losing my mind, I was kneeling down at a cross asking, where is all this information coming from? Because I was understanding that I couldn't share it with anybody. They were starting to think I was crazy, my own family. You know, I was feeling very alone. So I asked creator, show me, where is this coming from? Is this a past life? Is this something I, I know I've done this before? Led people to this energy or myself or something. And that's when I get a vision of walking on a road, I see my feet, like I'm looking out of my eyes, I could see the bottom of my tunic or whatever it was. I had sandals and I'm walking on like a dirt sandy road. I, and it was so clear, I could see every little light hitting every pebble. And I look to my left and there's two rivers, they're joining. I look to my right, there's another, another river and I'm kind of walking in between them. And I see in front of me, they're coming in the one. And I'm like, the division ends. And at first, I'm like, well, thanks. That helps a lot. And then I get the feeling. I'm like, let me see if I can look up three rivers coming into one. And the very first thing was parting of the Red Sea. The very Whoa. first thing I found. So I was like, I don't know who I was or, or whatever back then, but I was there. And I had absorbed some information to be used in this lifetime during Ascension, where it's all calling, being called back together into a singular aspect of creator. And that's what it really what it's about. We spent our energy to have the experience, we're calling it all back. Um, but yeah, that was the first time I believed in past lives when I, I had that happen. Do you think there was a, a time when humanity was so much more advanced than it is right now? And that would be why the pyramids were built. Do you think these beings were a part of that reality back then? I know they were. Um, but the thing is, is we're just as advanced. We've always been advanced, but the suppression is different. So what happened? Um, well, you could say the powers that be don't want people awakening. They don't want you discovering your free will. It's going to disrupt the whole system. Um, this whole system and behind that system is the harvesting of, of your energy, your quantum energy that's almost traded with these, these interdimensional beings on like the black market. You know, your emotions are the currency that they're looking to capture. That's the gold. If I have free will over my emotions, I can't be controlled. 
Do you think that there's like a race of beings that are doing this? Yeah, there's a race of beings that are not human, that are interdimensional, just like, you know, angels aren't human. There's other beings that simply want certain energies and just repeating patterns so that they can harvest within that pattern um, because it's what they're made out of. It's not that they just hate you and it's what they're made out of. It's their survival. So we don't need that energy anymore for, for survival. We consider it like a, a virus in the computer system. That's just kind of holding our potential in rather than allowing us to expand. They're like parasites that feed off of fear. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So that's why you see in the media or this, it's fear, 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 this, worry, 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 and not as much of the positive. Um, because if you introduce neuro-linguistic -ling programming, enough of this into your system, you have a pattern now. Now, this pattern is what these things attach to. First, they deposit enough of it into your awareness, then it's implemented. Now, you're feeling the fear. And then you're acting on the fear, and then it starts then this pattern yeah. in this cycle. And Wow. So to be aware of what food I feed myself spiritually, my thoughts, my emotions, very important. You just want to be aware. Even when it's coming from myself, you know, my inner thoughts, my inner emotions, I always want to say thank you for what you've taught me, but I don't identify with you. I am already whole. So there's a lot of things that are going to cause us to feel that contraction and the tightening of our nervous system and the tenseness. I want the ability to speak to it and cause myself to expand through the knowing that I already am. I am all of creation. So as long as I'm putting this information in my system a little bit each day, it's easy to get to that space. Without the programming, it's going to be hard to arrive at that knowing, to open my system back up when circumstances of the world wants to shut it down. Yeah. Trauma. Wow. Yeah, really grounding yourself in that, in that knowing. Yeah, and the mind-heart connection, because most of what we see is, a lot of people are very emotional with little logic behind it or very logical with little emotion and very few are using them together. And that's the conscious subconscious working together as opposed to conflicting with each other. Um, that's where the distortions and the, and the mixed wiring comes in. Do you think a lot of the UFOs and the orbs of light that are in the sky at night are these beings that you've seen and experienced? I, some are, some aren't. Um, I, I know I did a speaking engagement with uh, a guy named Chris Bledsoe. Um, Stop it! I was literally just going to ask you about Chris Bledsoe. You've actually met no him? No way. Yeah, that's yeah, actually dude, where so I was going I, with this. Okay, no so way. okay, so yeah, tell me everything. <laughs> so uh, I'm going. I go to North Carolina. I'm I'm supposed to be giving a, a speak on my experience and what I learned from my near death for IANS in North Carolina. And I'm just supposed to be attending this, this event at the Heart Center. So they say, we had a last minute cancellation. Do you want to speak right before Chris? And I'm like, sure, but I was so nervous. I was like, um, but yeah, it was such an exciting opportunity. So he spoke right after me and afterwards we all sat in a circle and he called him in and you start to see the flashes of light. And all I can tell you is that they were pure energy that they weren't physical um, and that they were just flashing, flashing, um, and that they spoke to him about the Trinity, the Divine Mother, the Father, coming together into one, singularity. A lot of the things that I spoke to him about really helped me make sense of some of what I uh, dealt with. He said he saw, he literally was gone, saw beings come out of the craft that had a triangle on their chest. And I'm like, whoa. Yep, they had a glowing so, triangle. Yeah, yeah, so that was the first time I had met him, and we, we hung out for a bit. But he was super busy that day, so I didn't want to bug him too much. Everybody wanted his autograph. But for me, being in it and doing it and, and like, speaking right before him and having the references, I'm like, man, there's no way it's coincidence. I'm here for a reason. Absolutely. Yeah, his story is incredible. And I see a lot of the parallels between what you're saying and what he said as well. So it's wild that you brought that up, that you actually met him. And so that's, you know, kind of what I'm wondering, because he says the lady 
has told him, the lady, the woman the, that he sees. Have you read his book? Uh, most of it, yeah. Okay. So he saw this woman, and she's appeared to him a few times. And she says that there's going to be a shift in humanity when the star of Regulus aligns with the gaze of the Sphinx, you know, at a certain time. And apparently, I think that's around the year 2026 when there's like this, mm-hmm. this shift going to happen. So I don't know. It's all very exciting. I mean, I do feel like a lot of people shifting, I, even from friends of mine who don't even necessarily follow or believe this stuff are feeling oh, yeah. it. It's all frequency and energy and, 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 you know, polarity, consciousness. You know, we just put an image on it. You have your own practice now. What do you do to help others heal? Yep. So I, I help them learn how to ground their nervous system, release the cellular memory that causes us disharmony, physical pain. Um, as I mentioned, I was someone who was challenged with that, uh, getting run over by a car, numerous car accidents, sports and broken bones. I never thought I'd be out of pain. And here I am. I take nothing. It's it's state of being. It's energy. So I teach people how to, to deal with that um, by releasing it, um, releasing their emotions, releasing their past traumas. I teach them how to basically rewire their system on how it processes and relates to it. You can reach me at, through trinityquantumhealth.com. Um, there's some testimonials there. There's a lot on on my Facebook, and it's all kinds of things. You know, people not needing their glasses anymore, to digestive disorders being healed, um, and people having visions and and all kinds of wild stuff. That I'm just like, wow, this is beautiful to experience, and I'm just lucky to be a part of. That's awesome, um, Stephen. Do you do any hands-on healing work? Because you had that moment with the woman at GameStop. Have you had any more experiences like that where you've healed people with your hands? Oh yeah, that's what I do now. That's what I was uh, doing in uh, North Carolina as well. I did speaking and then group healing after that. Um, so yeah, I do hands-on. I work with people every day from all over the country through quantum entanglement, so I can connect with them no matter where they are because I know that we're already one and it's a matter of getting into that knowing and then them kind of surrendering certain things and connecting certain energies. Hey, to their creator, not to me. Hey, I don't need this anymore. I'm ready for this. So yeah, I work with people uh, all over the world, distance sessions, hands on. Amazing. Do you have a final message for the audience? I would say the final message is to be, don't trade your, authenticity or your identity for approval um to understand that you were loved before you came in here nobody's here nobody can make you feel guilty or shameful for being a human when you were supposed to be human um understand that the real story for you to have is between yourself and all of creation that's the love story it's not just this person just that person but it's everywhere And when you start to embody and believe that you're a divine being, you start to see it around you. And you should believe you're that because that's what you are. Beautiful. What a perfect ending. Thank you so, so much. It was such a great conversation. I had so much fun with you. And I would love to do this again sometime if you're free later on um, somewhere down the road. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Your support means the world to me, and I will see you in the next video.